huh. System revisions are an odd thing, all right? Usually I find that with handhelds, uh, they're normally for the best. Normally they take the handheld and just make it overall better. You know, stuff like the new Nintendo 3DS and 3DS XL and the Game Boy Advance SP. Questioning your faith? Check out the Nintendo DS Lite. However, with home consoles, it generally kind of feels like home console revisions are generally just to get kind of get that console cheaper and they remove a bunch of features and they're generally the less desirable version. Even when, like design-wise, they may be the superior. Uh, look at the NES to the NES Top Loader, the revision here in North America. You know, that version of the NES was significantly better in nearly every way. However, it did not have AV out. You had to use crusty ass RF. Oh my God. Same deal with the SNES to the SNES Junior as uh, many call it. You know, like, overall, uh, I do feel like the downgrade is significantly less severe than from the NES to the NES top loader. Uh, however, with design-wise, gross. And also, video quality just isn't as good on that thing. But then you have things like the PlayStation line of systems, the PS3, from PS3 to PS3 Slim to PS3 Super Slim. Uh, I think the PS3 Slim is generally considered to be the best overall uh, in, in terms of reliability and just overall design. However, the original PS3 had so many features and just so much garbage crammed into it that it's kind of hard to look at that and look at the PS3 Slim and not really see that as you know, a bit of a downgrade. It may be more reliable, but it doesn't have a that card slot. But sure, there are some good home console revisions, mainly the Xbox line. Xbox 360S is you know, the best Xbox 360. The Xbox One S was a considerable upgrade from the original Xbox One, and the Xbox One X was a considerable upgrade from that. But we're not talking about good revisions today. We're gonna talk about one of the most useless and worthless versions of the Wii to ever exist. In fact, I'd say this is the most worthless. Of course, there are three versions of the Wii. You have the original Wii, this, and the Wii Mini. And the Wii Mini is generally considered to be the worst version of the Wii. That one had a bunch of stuff taken out. No internet connectivity, nothing like that. But the Wii Mini had personality. This is, is like, I don't know. This is considered to be the Wii Family Edition. Uh, I don't think that's the official name for the thing. Most people just call it the Family Edition. And uh, that name was pretty much coined because uh, I believe there were a bunch of bundles this released in, uh, in Europe, where they called it, oh, the Family Edition bundle, where it came with like a game or something like that and uh, people just said, oh, okay, just call it the Family Edition because I think the actual code name, uh, yeah, we're just gonna call it the Wii Family Edition. This revision occurred in 2011. I believe Nintendo officially announced it for North America alongside uh, a Nintendo Select lineup of games. You know, classic Wii games for 20 bucks a pop. So this was a very budget-conscious announcement from Nintendo, uh, mainly because this Wii was only $149.99. The Wii itself was retailing for around $199.99 around the time, so this was yet another price cut for the system, uh, 50 bucks off. However, with that price cut came a reduction in the feature set. This Wii lacks GameCube compatibility. No GameCube ports, no GameCube memory card ports. You can't put a GameCube disc in. If you just put a GameCube disc in this, it'll just spit it back out. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, I mean, to be fair, the Wii wasn't winning its main market over with the fact that it had GameCube compatibility in here. Uh, people weren't buying a Wii in 2011 because, oh, I can play my GameCube games on this thing. So, if there was any feature they were gonna cut, it made sense they were gonna cut GameCube support. But cutting it, I'm just surprised, like, that feature alone cost $50? Well, that's not the only thing that they cut. They cut... The stand. Yeah, this Wii is meant to be laid on its side. Many people laid their Wii horizontally like this. Uh, you know, the launch Wiis, even if the Wii logo was uh, oriented differently. Uh, people would do that, including myself for a little bit. I would change up the orientation of my system all the time. I did that with pretty much all my consoles. I remember uh, standing my Xbox 360 up 
sometimes and then laying it flat, uh, doing the same thing with the Wii U. You know, I kind of just did it to mix things up sometime. It's like moving stuff around in your bedroom for no reason. It was just like, hey, you know what? We're mixing things up. So I used to do that with my Wii and I guess Nintendo wanted a way to kind of differentiate this Wii from the launch Wii. So they said, no, nah, this one's going on its side. On top of those two features, we have a third being a new color. Blue. Anybody remember when the Wii was originally uh, announced? They actually showed uh, numerous different colors of that thing. Green. But for the longest time, Nintendo literally just did white Wiis. Uh, it took them a while to do black Wiis. And uh, then with the Family Edition, uh, I think they mainly did, you know, white, black, and blue here. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Other than that, uh, this is a Nintendo Wii. There's not much else to really say about it other than it's basically a launch Wii, but without a stand, on its side, and you can't play GameCube games on it. If you plug it into your TV, however, you wouldn't know that. For some reason, Nintendo kept the, the GameCube disc on the Wii disc channel on this system. I'd chalk it up to laziness. I think they just said, ah, who cares? You're not gonna harm anything by putting a GameCube disc in this Wii, so let's just leave it there. Interestingly, if you use the Wii Mini, uh, they actually went into that OS and edited out the GameCube disc on that system, so. Eh. And alongside with the uh, much more elaborate system design, uh, because let's be honest, as much as the Wii Mini is stupid, it looks kind of cool. Maybe not cool, but at least it's kind of cute. You know, I think just the red and black design is pretty nice. Uh, it just feels very retro. It just feels very, uh, it, it's just kind of a cozy design. I don't really know how to explain it. Originally, the Wii Mini only launched in Canada. And uh, I remember some people saying how Canada has a lot of people who have like cabins there. So uh, the Wii Mini lacking internet, they were like, oh, just leave it at the cabin. So uh, whenever I look at the Wii Mini, I think of like a nice log cabin. So yeah, I, I like the design of it. Uh, overall, this design is fine, but it's like, what the hell is the point of this thing? Yeah, $50 off and it lacks so many features and it barely looks any different. Uh, and, and it's also barely much smaller. You know, it's a little smaller, but not much. And yes, this is yet another unopened Wii I am opening for the first time. Wow. Uh, we have our literature right here, including uh, an, an ad for Netflix, a step-by-step -step direction on how to access Netflix on this Wii. Yeah, 2011 was around the time that uh, those $100 streaming boxes were getting a little more popular, stuff like the Rokus, Apple TVs, etc. And uh, I think a lot of people decided not to get those because they realized their Wii can do Netflix. So for $150, uh, getting this Wii and uh, playing, you know, Wii games on it, but also being able to stream Netflix, you know, not a horrible offer. Look at this. Look at this, a nice, a nice blue color. This is kind of blue I usually refer to as pathetic blue. It looks nice, but it also looks like it gets bullied at school. Uh, yes, this top where the uh, GameCube flaps would normally be, uh, yeah, these ain't budging. Other than that, I mean, you can put it, <laughs> you, you can place it up, uh, but uh, now it looks gross. It's meant to be kind of just placed on its side, but even then, uh, it doesn't look 100% right. It's kind of like, you know, um, you know, when you'd place the Wii on its side like this, the original launch edition Wii, you know, it, it looked a little off because, you know, the orientation of the Wii logo and all the text and all that weren't, you know, were in the wrong direction. But hey, I mean, you look like a badass. The Nintendo logo itself is still like in this direction, uh, but then the ATI logo right here is, is in that direction. And uh, it just overall looks like Nintendo's trying to put as many logos in a certain direction as possible to make it feel like, you know, regardless if you put it this way or this way, uh, you aren't gonna feel left out. But in the end, it makes it look like no matter what orientation you put the system in, it's gonna look f***ed up. And for 150 bucks, uh, this version uh, did not come with a game. Well, that stinks. I just remember a lot of people being upset about this system in 2011, mainly because of the lack of GameCube controller support uh, and GameCube uh, compatibility. You know, keep in mind, you not only can't play GameCube games on this system, but you can't use GameCube controllers either in games like Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Mario Kart Wii. You can use games that uh, require the GameCube ports for their own accessories. Uh, stuff like the Dance Dance Revolution games, Active Life Outdoor 
challenge, etc. However, I feel like the people that were getting really upset at the fact that this Wii lacked GameCube controller support already had Wiis with GameCube controller support. And, <laughs> what? What do you what do you want, man? This was an obvious case of Nintendo just stripping as much stuff as they could have out of the Wii to kind of get it down to that 150 price point. And they sure did. Of course, a year later, they released the Wii Mini, which knocked that price right on down to 100 bucks. So it just makes me ask, why? If you were gonna revise the system in a year anyways, why does this exist? Well, they had a few bundles with this system. I remember the black one with New Super Mario Bros. Wii and the Super Mario Galaxy CD, which still befuddles me. Like, why the CD? You can't play CDs on this thing. But overall, I feel like this was a very kind of forgotten and somewhat pointless <laughs> revision of the Wii. Uh, one of the most pointless revisions in history, considering a year later they, they had a more pointless revision. But in, in the end, uh, because it was more pointless, honestly made it less pointless than this one. I don't know, I'd rather have the Wii Mini just because of how stupid it is and how more unique it is. This one is just kind of boring. Like, what do you want me to do with this thing? Play Geist? I can't.